friends and welcome back to another day in the kitchen. I thought I would bring you all along today as I did some canning and some things in the kitchen because you all have been absolutely loving seeing that and this is my life right now with the summer garden super busy in the kitchen and so I thought that I would bring you along again today. I really want to try to make some green salsa verde using green tomatoes. I have seen recipes all over the internet where you can use green tomatoes and make a green salsa verde instead of using tomatillos. So you can use this salsa for of course just eating with chips and things like burrito bowls and tacos but you can also use it to make like a green enchilada and there are a ton of different recipes where you can use this salsa and it looks delicious so I'm really excited to try to make this today and have it to use in recipes I first saw this recipe from Becky over at Acre Homestead she is a true inspiration she's so knowledgeable in all things garden and kitchen and I just love watching her definitely go follow her if you don't already but um I really loved seeing how she used this in recipes so it inspired me to try to make it I also really want to make some of her cowboy candy soon since we have a ton of jalapenos ready right now that I need to use up before they go bad um, I pickled some last year so this year I wanted to try something different and this is like a sweet and spicy delicious um, pickled jalapeno that you can also top on your tacos you can also make some appetizers with it and things like that so I want to make that today too if I have time we will see but I just wanted to bring you along for my whole day in the kitchen and I hope you enjoy coming along with me today so I got outside around 5 45 this morning because I wanted to get out there before it got too extremely hot to do my harvesting and I picked 12 pounds of green tomatoes so that is what we're going to use for the salsa verde and then here are all of the jalapenos that I picked yesterday that like I said really need to get to pickling and making some recipes with and then while I was harvesting the green tomatoes, I realized there was a ton of red tomatoes already getting ripe. They ripened in seriously a day. There was hardly any red tomatoes out there yesterday. So this was a huge surprise this morning. I was so excited. So I went ahead and picked all of those and I already got them washed. And I'm going to let them continue to ripen before I start to can any of these because there really can't be any green spots. They have to be really, really, really ripe before you can them in a beautiful deep red. So I'm just going to set these on the counter and let them ripen the next few days. But today we're going to focus on the green salsa. And I have been already going ahead and weighing out some of my tomatoes on this little kitchen scale that Wesley got me for Christmas. You're gonna be seeing a lot of things that I'm gonna use throughout the next couple weeks that were Christmas gifts um, because my family was so sweet and bought me a ton of um, canning and kitchen supplies this last Christmas. And so now I'm finally getting to break them out and put them to good use, so I'm super excited. And this kitchen scale is one of the things he got me and I have been weighing out whenever you can um, in order to get like an accurate amount of um, produce to your liquid and then to how many jars that you'll need and all of that you really need a scale to weigh it so I have just been getting my tomatoes weighed up I just weighed all of these and it is about 12 pounds which is exactly the amount that it takes to make this green salsa so we're about to get started on that and then I also have all of this over here that I have washed this morning and got ready I also really want to make some bread and butter pickles because those are my favorite and I'm running low on jars of those from last year so I, in the next few days I don't know if it'll be today because I'm already doing the other two things but in the next few days I'm gonna be making those and I will um, film a little portion of that as well maybe and add it in here we got our first cabbage all of our other cabbage is ready to harvest but we have just got to get down there and do it um, I'm kind of wanting to get a lot of this produce taken care of first before we bring in um, I think it's seven heads of cabbage so before we do that yeah I want to get all this taken care of we have some zucchini I want to get in the freezer I've already froze two bags of it but I want to do some more I gave my mom a whole basket full of goodies yesterday and then my aunt and cousins are coming down this weekend and I'm super excited because I'm going to send them home with a ton of stuff. We've been given our neighbor stuff, our landlord stuff, and the abundance is just incredible. So I'm super excited um, for them to come and, like I said, get some of these goodies too. That's why I'm kind of just saving them here and kind of just going to have it 
out for whatever they want to choose. So I'm now going to get this side of the sink filled up and get our tomatoes washed. It was so nice this morning because Wesley didn't have to go in until 7 and that is super rare. He clocks in at 4 a.m. every morning. So that was a super nice treat that he didn't have to go in till seven. And so we both got to go out to the garden early together. Normally that is our um, evening routine, but we got to go out early together and it was really nice um, to just walk around, check everything and have kind of like a slow morning together. I really like getting out around five or six because again in the summer it's just a really good way to get a head start on the day get a lot done and it not be so 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 hot and miserable um it's kind of like more of a peaceful garden experience <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna start to core these tomatoes. I'm also gonna have to peel them. So after this, I'll stick them in some simmering water and then the skins will just peel right off. So that is what I'm gonna start working on now. But I wanted to tell you all, I was reading through the comments this morning on my last couple videos and it just got me emotional. And I just wanna say, Thank you so much because I never imagined by sharing my love for this that so many of you would be so inspired and so interested in it. And the response that I got of please share more, please share more was just far greater than I um, ever would have thought that you all wanted to see. So i um, super excited about that because this is something that I love just so much like more than I can even describe and knowing that I can share it with you all um is even more of a blessing um and I also got a question on the why um why we grow this food and why I choose to can it and so I thought I would talk a little bit about that too the short simple answer would be that I cannot possibly think of a reason not to because I just love it so much. Um, but really there are just so many, so many reasons to do it that again, I can't imagine not doing it. So number one, um, how much better homegrown food is for you. Um, that's something that I really learned a lot about last year and really, really dove into that hard with research about learning how the food that we get from the grocery store is not the best for us. When I really dove deep into research on our food system and what is put in our food and sold on the grocery store shelves, it was just truly eye-opening and um, made me very aware. And that's when I really, really dove into gardening hard. And not only how much better homegrown food is for you, but also how much more cost effective and how much money that we're saving. For those potatoes, I think we maybe spent a total of $10 on seed potatoes and look at all of those potatoes that we got. And not only are they for us to eat, but also for, um, you know, our parents and family that we're able to share with. Um, so it's not only helping out us, but also our families and other people in our community, our landlords, um, everyone that, you know, we're able to share with. I um, just want to learn everything. I want to learn how to, you know, grow and can all of our own food because it's, when I love something so much, I just want to constantly learn about it. I never want to stop learning. And so, I mean, all day long, I'm listening to gardening podcasts and um, gardening YouTube videos and taking in all the knowledge. And I just feel like it's really important. So that's kind of a little bit into the why. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I could literally talk about this for hours about all the benefits, all the reasons. And I, that is just basically skimming the surface of um, a few of the main reasons. 
Since we've lived here every year, we've always grown a small garden, but like I mentioned, last year is really when we decided to amp it up and go a lot bigger and try to see how much we would be able to grow, and it has been such an incredible journey, and it's a dream of ours to hopefully be able to one day grow a year's worth of our own fruits and vegetables and be able to preserve them and last until the next garden season. Um, and try to live a little bit more sustainably and just rely less on the convenience of grocery stores. That's something that we both have just really, really grown a strong love for. I believe it is truly crucial to know how to grow your own food and to know where your food comes from, but I want to encourage you, even if you don't have a garden or you don't have a big enough space to do a small patio garden or something like that, you can still enjoy all of the delicious fresh veggies that this time of year offers. You can support your local farmers and your local gardeners and go and either just get a small quantity to eat on or if you were interested in canning, you could definitely find places that will let you buy big quantities in bulk. I know a lot of people that do that around here who buy from our local farmers or farmers markets or even our neighbors and they'll buy a large quantity of like, for example, corn to put in the freezer or um, berries to can and make jam or something like that um, and preserve a little bit because you know it has been grown locally and by people who you know the face of, you know exactly where it came from and you can have some of that good, nutritious, homegrown food in your freezer or on your pantry shelf, even if you didn't grow it yourself. And it's super important to support those people locally who do put in the work and the time to grow it. Not to mention also, again, how much better it is for you. And then it also helps support your local economy as well. For example, we didn't grow corn this year, but our neighbors did. So we're going to buy a couple dozen from them so that I can put it in the freezer and I can use it for things that I use corn in, like my corn salsas and taco soups and things like that. Just think about, you know, in the middle of December or the middle of January, opening up a jar of your home canned, homegrown potatoes and tossing those in a soup with some of your homegrown onions that came from the freezer with some um, home grown, home canned tomato sauce and making just a delicious vegetable soup or a chili. Oh my goodness. Um, and the taste and the good hearty nutrients from a meal like that is something that is so, so worth all of this. I wanted to show y'all how easily the skin peels off after you boil them for a couple minutes in water. And then you're going to stick them in a bowl of cold water so that way you'll be able to handle them. And then it just peels right off. So once you see they start to crack like that, they get some cracks in them in the water, that's when you're gonna pull them out and they're ready to peel. Okay, I went and got out my food processor because it makes chopping up all of these veggies so much easier. Um, and it's gonna speed up the process. I did this last year and it's just essential for making salsa. So I'm gonna start throwing in all of our green tomatoes and onions and jalapenos. Okay, I just added in all my seasonings. I'm gonna mix this in and then bring it to a boil. Okay, the salsa has now boiled for 10 minutes 
And now for the fun part, we're gonna ladle the hot salsa into our hot jars. Okay, all of my salsa already sealed. You know that it's sealed when if you press down on the top, it's completely flat and there's no bubble. They sealed like within 10 minutes of coming out, so that's super exciting. Um, and now we're gonna let them sit for a full 24 hours and then we will put them in storage. Okay, let's try some of this salsa. I didn't want to try it earlier because it was scalding hot and I felt like I really wouldn't be able to get all of the good flavors when it was so hot. So it's cooled off now and let's see. I expected it to be way more spicy. It's really not spicy at all. I think maybe our jalapenos that we're growing aren't super, super hot. So honestly, it could have used a few more jalapenos. So tomorrow, when I make another batch, I'm going to add more jalapenos and kind of give it a little bit more of a kick because I feel like it needs to be a little spicier, especially since I mainly wanted it for my husband and he loves really hot salsa. So... Yeah, that's the only thing I would change though. The rest, other than that, it's really, really good. And I'm so excited to use this in recipes. Okay, update on the salsa once I made the second batch. I ended up adding in some hot banana peppers because the recipe does say you can kind of use any kind of hot peppers that you choose into this. So I decided to add some of those from the garden and it added the perfect kick. I think I added about four in um, along with the jalapenos. Our jalapenos are more on the sweet and mild side than the super hot. So that's why the salsa wasn't very hot the first time. But with this extra added kick of the banana peppers, it really added the perfect spice to it and this salsa is so so good if you have tomatoes in your garden and you love green salsa i highly recommend trying this out so i have the dishwasher loaded and then these are all the dishes that i just like to hand wash and even though i'm about to make another mess and can some more stuff i still do not like to start any recipe or any project with a dirty kitchen i like to get everything washed and start loading the dishwasher that way I can just continue to put all the rest of the dishes in there and then um, have a clean sink so now that all that is in order I can focus on this cowboy candy okay I ended up not doing the cowboy candy today and I decided to do the bread and butter pickles instead since I had so many cucumbers and those tend to go soft and turn bad faster than jalapenos do so I was like I really need to get this done first so I went ahead and washed and then cut up all of my cucumbers into little rounds and then I also cut up some onions and you're supposed to let those soak in some ice water for two hours so I let those soak and then we made up our brine you can buy the little packets of like pickle mix and things like that that make it easier but 
I decided last year to go ahead and buy all of my seasonings to make my own bronze and um, salsas and things like that homemade that way I can trust and know the ingredients that are in them um, so I stocked up on like my turmeric and ginger and um, mustard seeds and everything that goes in all the things that I can sugar you need lots of sugar lots of vinegar and that way this year I don't have to run out to the store every time I go to can something I have it all here um, in stock and I can just grab from the pantry with whatever I plan on making that day so that has been super helpful and then again I know all the ingredients that are in it and they're just easy to grab out from the spice cabinet so for this it's again like vinegar and mustard seeds peppercorns ginger turmeric and a bunch of really yummy seasonings like that and then sugar and that is what makes up your brine to pour over your onions and cucumbers and then once that sits turns into pickles and while I was shredding up my zucchini to put in the freezer I also decided to make up some chocolate chip zucchini muffins because you all know I love to make these up um, ahead of time for the week to have them to grab for breakfast so I made some of those I did a different recipe this time and it wasn't my favorite I prefer the um, double chocolate ones that I usually make over these these were kind of more of a cinnamon and I just we like the chocolate ones better but now that is going to be it for this video i hope you enjoyed spending a day with me in the kitchen as we canned green salsa and pickles i love you all so much and i will see you in my very next video and i hope you have a great rest of your week i will also leave links below if you've missed any of my recent videos where we canned this blackberry jam together and i share with you how to dry your own herbs to use for cooking and in recipes and that way you can find them in case you missed them and I'll see y'all next time.